I've got dibs on this one, Iris. I haven't seen one that sweet in a while. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're ranking all the American Horror Story seasons from worst to best. So is this all of you? At the moment. Cordelia Fox, headmistress. For this list, we're looking at the first 10 AHS seasons and breaking them down from scary bad to scary good. Since it's still airing as of this publication, NYC won't be included. Which season is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Double Feature This 10th season of AHS has a lot going on. Split into two parts, Red Tide and Death Valley, Double Feature is hard to follow, ultimately confusing and disjointed. Part 1 follows talentless artists who wind up being successful thanks to a magic pill, which also has a pesky side effect that turns them into vampires. Part 2 introduces a four-episode premise surrounding aliens, impregnated men, and strangely enough, President Eisenhower. I'm the President of the United States. Now, this world is trying to destroy itself for as long as I can remember, and we don't need any more help, so... I'm asking you, stop the killing. The historical figures in Corporation was likely an attempt to intrigue the audience, but it really just added to the errant strangeness. Though certainly not simple or boring, the season's disconnect and complexity left us mostly disappointed. There is nothing more tragic, pathetic, and sad than a person with no talent trying to make it in the world. Number 9. Hotel Lady Gaga's portrayal of the glamorous, vampire-esque Countess is pretty much the one good thing to come out of Hotel. What brings you to the Cortez? Similar to Double Feature, many plot points and storylines make the season feel like too many ideas to keep up with. Inspired by real-life horrors associated with Los Angeles hotels, the season is especially dark, with portrayals of infamous killers like Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy. You see, Jeffrey. Don't I always take care of you? The subsequent intensity resulted in mixed critical reception, with many arguing that season 5 is more ostentatious than it is scary. Not to mention, this was the first season missing AHS favorite Jessica Lange, likely contributing to its perceived inferiority. Ignore her. She drinks. But the law requires a witness. And I've witnessed plenty. Number 8. Cult Drawing inspiration from the controversial 2016 U.S. presidential election, Cult is the topical AHS season that addresses current events in America. Above all, humans love fear. The fear that over time we have honed and polished and built up brick by brick until it stands before us every day as tall as the Trump Tower. At the center of the story are Kai Anderson and Ali Mayfair Richards, politically inclined individuals on completely opposite ends of the spectrum. Kai is a radical far-right cult leader, and Ali is a progressive lesbian spiraling as extreme ideologies surround her. <laughs> the seventh season does well in terms of building suspense and giving us some creepy clown scares, but the political generalizations were not the most well-received. Given the fact that Cult was released so soon after the real election, the inclusion of politics was bound to generate a negative response. I can't imagine the depths of sorrow you must feel right now. Incredible sorrow. Number 7. Freak Show After three widely celebrated seasons, season 4 was the first that seemed to disappoint more of the AHS fandom. Clowns and cupid dogs. Maybe that's what you're used to. But you're on a real freak show now. My freak show. Living up to its name, Freak Show is all things crazed and unhinged, as a circus troupe struggles to survive desperate times and terrors. Inevitably, the portrayal of the so-called freaks, all of whom have distinct attributes, can be easily considered insensitive and stigmatizing. Well, what do you want? Well, this is a diner, ain't it? We're hungry, and we want to be served. Though the season started promisingly, a multitude of emerging threats and simultaneous storylines take away from whatever message Freak Show is trying to convey. However, the season does give us Twisty the Clown, one of AHS's most memorable and terrifying antagonists. <laughs> Oh. 
Number six, Roanoke. Are you all right? Are you hurt? No, no, no. Please stop. Stop. I have to get you to a hospital. I didn't understand what happened. I still don't. Now, this one is tricky. AHS seasons always take us on a roller coaster journey. But as we've learned, it's sometimes just too much. Roanoke is the best example, as it's essentially a show within a show that confuses us with a switch from depicting the making of a paranormal documentary to a found footage format. Sweetheart, don't change the subject. No, no, really. no. There was a shadow. You have to tell him. Oh my god! Was that Agnes? Yes! Despite its intriguing concept of a couple's haunted farmhouse experience, the sixth season is not as riveting as others. Inclusion of the Piggy Man seemed to be added for the sole purpose of shock value rather than advancing the narrative, often leaving us wondering what exactly we're watching. <laughs> Number 5. 1984 With classic horror flicks serving as source material, 1984 is a tad predictable. Hey. Way too late, wide load. You totally missed it. They're so freaking scared. Set in the titular year at a summer camp, the ninth season takes us back in time, but with a fresh lens. Extensive inspo to draw from makes the episodes pretty chaotic, but the slasher scenes are done justice. I wish I never came to this place. Don't worry, Brooke. <laughs> You'll be leaving soon. As per usual, the casting is right on point as evidenced by Billy Lord's portrayal of the Manic Montana. But we must admit that Sarah Paulson's and Evan Peters' absences were felt. 1984 is also thus far the only AHS season set in an alternate universe, making the 80s homage nostalgic viewing for those who appreciate the slasher genre. Nobody knows exactly why he snapped, but one random night, Mr. Jingles grabs a knife and slaughters an entire cabin. Number 4. Apocalypse Season 8 immediately caught our attention thanks to returning characters from seasons past, whose storylines we were already invested in. Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. There's definitely a noticeable deviation from the typical horrific scares of AHS, as focus is more on exploring the interseason crossover. But this shift was long awaited and delivered in terms of engaging viewers in a way we had not seen before. How can any of you defeat me when I've already won? You haven't won. Perhaps you haven't noticed the state of the world. It's almost as bad as your dinner jacket, but at least the world can be saved. The returning characters, their continued stories, and their connections to others were equally compelling and entertaining. Some may have missed the terror invoked in scarier seasons, but we think Coven's witches trying to stop Murder House's Antichrist from ending the world is a respectable swap. I told Cordelia what I was going to do to all of you. I have deaths to avenge. Number 3. Murder House The season that started it all remains one of the best. The world is a filthy place. It's a filthy goddamn horror show. There's so much pain, you know? We're first introduced to a seemingly predictable premise surrounding your usual haunted house, but we quickly realize there's much more to explore and digest. In a lavish LA mansion, a newly moved in family unwittingly discovers years of horror, pain, and trauma that former residents and victims endured. You think I want to stay in this world of death and rot and regret? Try to find some dignity in the situation. Move on, Missy! I can't! I want to, but I can't! Ridden with ghosts, one of which hilariously takes the form of a maid, the murder house is filled with chill-inducing frights, emotional turmoil, and a slew of riveting historical accounts. There will be no funeral. The baby is upstairs and waiting for you in the nursery. Even if you think later seasons trump the premiere installment, there is no denying that season one is the one that got us hooked. Number two, Coven. Sarah Paulson is a standout in each season she appears in, but her performance as Cordelia in this women-dominated season is next level. I had to go blind to see things about you I couldn't see before. A bad cosmic joke. It's a different kind of clarity. Leading a coven of witches in New Orleans, Cordelia helps young girls harness their craft and survive external threats. 
Though not intensely horrifying, season three is chock full of refreshing humor, pop culture references, and stellar acting that make the female coven especially compelling and memorable. Coven is also the season that gave us this iconic meme. Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. Further solidifying its place among the best of AHS. And as if it wasn't elite enough, Stevie Nicks makes a cameo. Enough said. Good luck, girls. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Asylum Asylum is the epitome of complex AHS storytelling done right. Set in a haunted 1964 mental health hospital, a dictating nun oversees the treatment of, quote, criminally insane patients. Here you will repent for your crimes to the only judge that matters, to Almighty God. There is no God. Not a God who would create the things I saw. Introducing much more serious source material like mental illness, homophobia, and religion, the season tackles real-life constructs that are done justice by a perfectly assembled cast. Aside from the seriousness, Asylum gifted us the legendary number The Name Game, which still lives rent-free in our minds a decade later. Judy, 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 bo booty, banana, fana, fo foodie, thief, fan, mo moody. Judy. Riding off high expectations from the success of Murder House, Asylum is the follow-up that delivers an equally entertaining mix of eeriness and the delightfully bizarre. Even though it's the much older second season, it still reigns supreme. I don't know what's gotten into you lately, sister, but it's a decided improvement. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.